Right now, the virus has spread to more than 150 countries. Our reporters are right across the globe to bring you the latest information that you need to know. First up, I'd like to go to our Barbie Nadeau, who is in Rome with us. Also, Scott McLean is in Spain, where the death toll is now more than 500. Well, Barbie, I want to start with you because the number of confirmed cases and deaths in Italy is certainly alarming. Over 30,000 cases, over 2,500 deaths. But some people are saying family members who have all the symptoms of the coronavirus, who are in hot spots in the north of the country, haven't been tested. Uh, they, didn't, they weren't tested before they passed away. They haven't been tested posthumously. I, just explain for us uh, how people are dealing with it, especially given the ban on funerals. No, you know, it's a, it takes a real emotional toll on these families to see their family members die and not be able to bury them, not to be able to, to practice their Catholic faith. This is a very devout country. You know, we're getting more and more statistics on this death. One we just got from a study is the average length of time between symptoms and death for a lot of these people who have died is just eight days, which does beg the question if they should have been tested sooner or that they should have been under care sooner. And those are questions that are being asked all across the country, especially in parts of Italy where we haven't seen the higher numbers here in Rome we've got about 600 cases but a lot of people are asking are there more are there people uh, that are asymptomatic and spreading the virus and as this lockdown goes further everyone becomes more and more nervous and you feel the tension we're in front of a grocery store here people lined up to go in it's very tense we just don't know if the person next to you is carrying the virus and if if you're vulnerable if you have pre-existing health conditions how that puts you at risk and I think as this lockdown goes on we're going to see more and more of that incredible tension just on the rise here, Linda. Yeah, I, I want to come back to you on that in just a moment, Bobby, but I, I do want to go to Scott McLean in Spain because this country now has the second highest number of cases in Europe and it's rapidly rising and authorities, they're certainly trying to take this seriously now, essentially uh, telling people, 46 million people in the country, to, to stay in your home. And, and I, I know you're at a... Um, a military pharmaceutical company. Just explain what's happening there. Sure. So this is a, a sterile military production facility, which is why I'm wearing the, the hat and the gown right now. It, it is normally producing a wide variety of drugs for Spanish troops abroad. Now, though, it is only producing just two. Paracetamol, what Americans might call Tylenol, and hand sanitizing gel. We know that that has been in short supply. So this here uh, is part of the process. This, these big uh, silver vats you can see there is part of the process to create this hand sanitizer gel. And then it ends up being in these big uh, jugs here, probably about five liters or so, uh, that are then shipped off to hospitals. Obviously, uh, Spain is preparing for the worst. You mentioned wartime footing, uh, and that's exactly what this seems to be. Uh, they don't know how long this is going to go on for, and so they are preparing for the absolute worst. And so once they get it in these jugs, then it comes to, the, to this area where it's prepared to be shipped off all across the country. The paracetamol they are also producing from uh, scratch from the original ingredients. They put it uh, in these blister packs. We saw a different part of the facility earlier that was doing that. They put it in these boxes and then it, eventually it gets out, shipped out to hospitals around the country. This virus, this pandemic though, Linda, has taken a massive toll on Spain's economy. The Prime Minister announced just yesterday measures uh, equaling about $200 billion in bailout. $100 billion of that is a line of credit meant for companies to ensure that they don't go under during this time. The Prime Minister is also ensuring that anyone who has a house will not lose it during this epidemic. And when it comes to staying in their houses, obviously the military is doing this, producing these types of drugs. Uh, but they are also patrolling the streets. They are also sanitizing and cleaning train stations and bus stations. Uh, the Prime Minister said earlier in uh, the Spanish Parliament that until there is a vaccine, all of us are the vaccine, meaning you have to do your part. You have to stay in your home. Exactly. That some good advice there. Uh, Scott, thanks so much. I want to go back to Barbie Nadeau because we have been hearing these stories constantly, Barbie, about uh, cases where doctors have to decide who to treat and, and who not to treat and how to prioritise. What are authorities doing there about the concerns over the lack of beds and ventilators? 
Well, you know, we just had a call today that, that from the government to ask any doctor or nurse who has retired in the last few years to come back into service. They've asked all the private hospitals to now open their doors, and that, I think, really underscores the level of concern about the over, uh, the stress on the system, and, and you know, they're out of, they're, they're running out of ICU beds. We've got uh, field hospitals in play. They're running out of respirators. You know, they've got, they're asking people to donate blood. You know, this really is a crisis critical situation Linda and they're not expecting us to see a turn in the numbers until at least March 26 that means we could see this curve continue to go up before we get any good news and see if this lockdown that we're all under is making any difference at all Linda many weeks ahead of them all right Bobby Nadeau for us in Roma thanks also to Scott McLean in Madrid thanks so much I want to go to France now where you need a certificate just to leave your home to buy groceries CNN's Melissa Bell joins us now live from Paris. So uh, we are at war is how we heard the French, the French president describe this fight against the pandemic. And we certainly are seeing these drastic measures being taken now uh, where pretty much people need some sort of form just to leave their home, just to explain what it is. That's right, Linda, but the same thing had happened in Italy. People were meant as they left their homes to have a piece of paper saying why they were leaving, to be able to explain that they're going to the supermarket, that they're going to the pharmacy. Here in France, a bunch of people, of course, as you'd imagine, have been caught off guard, uh, fined for not having that piece of paper that they need to have filled out before they leave their home to do those essential bits of shopping or to go and see uh, the medical uh, uh, representative that they're meant to be seeing that day. So uh, pretty strict conditions. But if, what we see here, what's so interesting about what's happening uh, throughout Europe right now, Linda, is that uh, we are seeing the crisis play out uh, in a sort of pattern in very similar ways just a few days apart. The latest figures from France here, more than a thousand dead announced yesterday over the previous 24 hour period, reaching levels that we were seeing in Italy about nine days ago. All the countries in Europe have so far gone from a sanitary crisis to a medical one to a psychological one as people realize they're going to be locked away uh, and really having to change their day-to-day -day lives and their habits, often cut off from family and friends. And then it becomes an economic crisis that is looming. I think that's very much what's happening here in Europe where we have countries like Italy and Spain who are a little bit ahead of France. And then a political one with the European Union having to reaffirm yesterday its commitment to the single market in the face of a crisis that is bringing barriers up between countries uh, for medical and sanitary reasons, Linda. So an extraordinary crisis here in Europe uh, as country after country locks down and faces these new problems and questions and uncertainties. All right, Melissa Belfast in Paris. We will touch base with you again very soon. Thanks so much.